All right, so this is my interpretation of number five from 2005b. Let's do a linear regression and the AP stats free response questions. So John believes that as he increases his walking speed, his pulse rate will increase. He wants to model the relationship, records his pulse rate in beats per minute while walking at seven different speeds and miles per hour. Here's the scatter plot and the regression output. So this is a very common regression output in AP stats. And I'm gonna train you to go right here where it says coefficients here. Are, this is probably the most important part of the output, depending on what they're asking you. But these values right here are the coefficients of the regression equation, the linear equation here. So we have a constant and the variable speed. So the coefficient for speed is 16.2 and the constant is 63.457. Also notice we have an R squared value. So we could figure out R by taking the square root of that if we need to. Uh, keep in mind that we're not always sure when we do that if R is positive or negative, but because of the scatter plot here, we know that it is positive. If they ask us to do that, um, otherwise what do we have? The uh, standard error of the coefficient, that's gonna come up a little bit later. And that's about it. So let's get to the problem. Part A, using the regression output, write the equation of the fitted regression line. So that's pretty easy to do. Looking at the two coefficients they give us, we have one for constant and one for speed. Now remember that linear regression looks like this normally. We have a linear equation that is y equals mx plus b. The m is the slope, that's with the variable. So that is the number 16.28. Okay, that is with the variable speed, which is the x variable. So remember, we always use a little hat when we want to show that we're predicting. So the predicted pulse rate, I'll try to write this as neat as I can. Pulse rate. And then we put a little hat on top of it, is going to equal. So y equals mx. So it's going to be 16.28. times the variable x, which here is speed. And then plus the constant, 63 point, we'll say four, five, seven. We'll just write it all out. Okay, so that is the equation. Anything else? I guess we could put beats per minute here. Beats per minute. Oh, that is ugly. So our units, beats per minute and miles per hour. So part B, do estimates of the slope and intercept parameters have meaningful interpretations in the context of this question? So they want us to interpret these two numbers right here, 16 and 63. So I would say, yeah, well, let's, let's do the first one, 16. What does that number mean in the context of this problem? That is the slope. And remember, a lot of teachers teach slope way back in Algebra 1, change in y over change in x. So in this problem, slope would be the change in pulse. All right, so let's say change in pulse rate over the change in speed. So it means, like if I want to write this out as 16.28, I can write that as a fraction like this over 1 which means that the pulse rate increases 16.28 beats per minute for every one mile per hour increase in our speed. So let me write that out. So writing that out for your benefit, I'll type it out. The slope represents a 16.28 increase in pulse rate for every increase of one mile per hour in speed. All right, that's easy enough. Now, what about the other one? Because it said slope and intercept. So the intercept, okay, what does that number represent? That number, 63.457. Okay, that is what happens when this term goes away, or in other words, the speed is zero. Right, so a speed of zero would result in a pulse rate of 63.457. So let's write that out. So the intercept of 63.457 represents the pulse rate for a speed of zero. That is what we call a resting pulse rate, but pretty sure you don't need that, by the way. Beats per minute. All right, let's include our units. 
miles per hour. All right, lastly, I think we did B pretty well. Lastly, John wants to provide a 98% confidence interval for the slope of the, per the slope parameter in his final report, compute the margin of error. So I'm gonna take us back uh, to the formula for the margin of error. So here is the formula sheet that was given with that test. And here is confidence interval. It's generic, but it tells you that a confidence interval is the test statistic plus or minus um, a critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. So do we know the standard deviation of the statistic? And do we know the critical value? Let's go back and see what we have here. The margin of error for B, okay, where B is the slope, here is the slope of the line right here. We have the standard error. Let's write down what we need, and then we'll see what we have. So we have the standard error. Remember, this equals T star times the standard error of B. That'll give us the margin of error. But we have the standard error of B. It's right here, right? Standard error of the coefficient. So that part becomes 0.8192. Now what we need is the T star value for 98% confidence interval. So remember with T, we need to figure out the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom here is always gonna equal N minus two for regression, because we have two variables. In this case, it's going to be seven minus two, which is five, because there are seven data points. So that's the degrees of freedom. Now, we just need to figure out what T star is. So T star, well, let's figure that out over here. We have a 98% confidence interval, so the way that I taught my students, degrees of freedom equals five, and we want the middle 98% of the curve and we want to find what value for t will give us that. So in our calculator, we're going to put inverse t with 0.99 because I have to include that left-hand side tail. Degrees of freedom are going to be 5. Let's go to our calculator and do that. So here's our trusty 84. We're going to go into distributions and choose inverse t. That'll find us the value on the bottom. Remember, you got to put in 0.99, not 0.98 because we have to include that left-hand tail with the degrees of freedom and we get 3.36. All right, that's our T value. So let's write that down. 3.36. So I'm gonna multiply that times 0.8192. That seems like a calculator job as well. And we will get 2.756. Let's round that up, 2.757. So the margin error for B would be 2.757. And we're estimating B, remember B is the slope, which is pulse rate, all right? So it'd be beats per minute per mile per hour. That's a lot of pers. So there is our final answer there. Now, if just to give you an idea of what this number means again, if we're gonna estimate the slope, okay, we have a slope, we're gonna get a value, and then we add a little on top, and we subtract a little, and we create this interval where we believe the true slope would be, con the true population slope would be contained in that interval. Uh, this is the part that you add and subtract. That's what they're asking you in this question. And luckily, all the conditions were satisfied, so I didn't even address that, but we didn't have to worry about any of that because I said it was all good to go. So that is my interpretation of 2005B number five. Good luck out there.